I'm heading to the Midwest for 11 days in July and reviewing the Zero Breeze Mark II in the process. The forecast is calling for 80 degree nights and up to 98 degree days with humidity between 70 and 82%. Let's see if this battery powered portable AC is what it's promised to be. Alright, so me and Blue are currently headed out on a, a road trip to Missouri. So I'll be relying heavily on the Zero Breeze for this trip just because it's so hot and humid in the Midwest it really sucks to sleep in a tent. Normally I'm just like, man, I hope we luck out and get good weather. I'm trying to be quiet because I get other people camping next to me. My watch thermometer says it's 78 in here. It is humid. I've got this thing hooked up. We're at an actual campsite where I've got power. So I'm gonna run this thing all night and just see how it does. 78 degrees inside of the tent right now. I took my, my watch says it and then the unit said it. It takes up, it takes up basically a person's spot in here, more or less. It's already cooling down here dramatically. Blue will still be able to sleep in here just fine, but two people plus the dog, no way. If you have a flip style tent, you can flip it over and that'd be all right, I think. Because you'd have enough room at the floor of it, at the foot of it by the ladder, you'd probably set it up. It's gonna be nice having AC in here. And first thing in the morning, my watch says it's 53 degrees in the tent, which is amazing. Seventy-three degrees in here is what this is reading. I don't know how accurate my watch is. This is letting out fifty-nine degrees. It's in direct sunlight. This is an overcast day, and it's about eighty-eight degrees outside and humid. So it's cooling this down by about twenty degrees. And even though it's overcast, it is daytime, so it's pretty significant. I'm gonna take this thing down and set it up inside of the FJ so I can actually have a place for Blue. I feel bad for her because she's panting so hard she can't sleep during the day. She's an old dog. So I'm actually gonna use this and see what I can get the FJ's temperature down to in the day. If it's cool enough, I'll put Blue in there. Okay, me and Blue are sitting in the FJ with the zero breeze going. I forget how hot it is here. It is miserable. You just sit somewhere here and you're just sweating all over yourself. I forgot how humid it is. So this is a great test for this AC. So far, I've been using 110. I haven't used battery power yet. On 110, it's about 60 degrees when I wake up. So it's dropping the temperature a good 20, 25 degrees overnight. But we're sitting in here because Blue's, Blue's used to sleeping. She's an old dog. She's used to sleeping part of the day and she can't sleep. So anyway, I'm cooling her off with it right now. I didn't bring the duct with me, the front duct, and I wish I would have, because in this situation, I could point it right on her and cool her down a bit more. So I regret doing that. Anyway, I'm trying to cool her down a bit so she can sleep. It's an overcast day, so I should be able to cool the car down significantly. Now for grocery store stops and stuff like that, I still plan on using it, but this is a good time to kind of test it. So the FJ right now is not cooled off at all. So you have warm steel, warm plastic, all of that are still gonna be putting off heat as you're trying to cool the unit down. The idea is when we get to a grocery store on a road trip, the FJ's AC will have cooled the vehicle down. I won't have hot plastics like I do right now. And then this thing will do a lot better because it's, everything's already cooled down. Nothing, nothing's giving off heat. So I think in that situation it'll work better. Right now I just put it in a warm vehicle. I'm trying to cool it off. The AC will put out 30 degrees below ambient temperatures roughly. It's pretty close. But when you have two heat producing bodies inside of a warm environment anyway, of course it's fighting that. So what I'm finding is I'm getting about 20 degrees lower. So I'm, I'm sleeping at about 60 degrees. The first night I used it, the first night I used it was uh, it was like 50 degrees when I woke up. It was pretty cold in there. It was pretty chilly, like I was using a blanket. I've been looking forward to getting the tent every night. It's an impressive unit for what it's for. It's intended for this kind of use. We had it outside, blowing on blue the other day because she was getting hot again. 
and I never saw myself using this AC, setting it up and pointing it at me when I'm sitting outside, but especially in a climate like this, it works really well. I've not used the battery function yet. I did the test at the shop where I got seven, about seven and a half hours of use out of it, but I've not ran this on my battery yet. I have 110 here. These were the sites my brother booked at this lake, and so I'm using 110 when I can because I can use this thing on turbo mode. And with turbo mode, I'm getting the, the best cooling, of course, because it's putting out more. Now, I did sleep with it on sleep mode the other night, and instead of dropping it 20 degrees, 25 degrees, it was, it was around 15. It was around 82 out that night, and it was about 70 in the tent. So even on sleep mode, whenever I'm using it here in a few nights on just the battery, getting the full lifespan out of it should be no problem. So that's where I'm at right now with this. We're just doing a test. It's miserable. We're waiting to go out on the lake and then it's much better, but it's still, it's just, it's just so hot here. It's crazy. We are now into day five and we're doing a timing belt on my dad's Toyota. So I'm using the Zero Breeze as a spa cooler while we work on this thing. I had it about four or five feet away, so it really wasn't that useful. I would go over every once in a while and fill my shirt up with cool air. But aside from that, if I were to do it again, I would have put it on top of the engine and have it blowing right at us. For the next part of this test, I'm in Arkansas. And for the next couple days on these four wheel drive trails, I will be using nothing but battery power to run the Zero Breeze. We'll see how this goes, but putting out cold air. Last night was the first night I've actually slept just using the battery and it ran for like nine hours. <laughs> so I used it up here from like 10 30 to midnight last night and then I went to sleep and it woke me up because it was beeping and as an audible beep I found out when the battery runs out and it woke me up because it was out of battery. So I, uh, I plugged it into the FJ and that worked fine, ran off the battery, no problem. But I didn't really need to do that. I only did that for 10 minutes before I woke up. But now that I know this thing will last for nine hours, I don't know that I even needed to build that cable. Tonight, it's cool enough that I don't even need this thing. I could open the windows. But in the name of science, nine hours on the slowest speed is incredible. In my eyes, it's amazing that they could get an AC to run for that long it's not a high output machine but it's high enough for this it's high enough for camping it's high enough for a rooftop tent it's high enough for a small sealed tent i'm starting to rub the paint off unfortunately that's because i'm not necessarily careful with it um i'm traveling with it with bungees going through it to hold it steady and i'm carrying it in a place to where if this dog has to be left in the car that I can hook it up really quick, just put the ducks on and let it run and it doesn't need anything else. I was able to charge the Zero Breeze as well as my refrigerator battery, but because the Zero Breeze takes so long and the solar in the Midwest is not the greatest, I did have to run the vehicle for a while, but we were doing trails and stuff anyway, so it wasn't that big of a problem. In the camper, with as much solar as that has, that should be just fine. That shouldn't be a big, a big deal at all but I do plan on always having the battery charged before a trip and then I just have to play catch up. So now that I know it can run for nine hours, I also might consider in the future just running it specifically for my sleep cycle. Right when I go to sleep, if I'm hanging out in here or in the camper for that, not running it, and then that way I'm not absolutely burning the battery down. So maybe it won't take six hours to charge, maybe it'll take five or something like that. It's, a, it's quite a little contraption that is making this trip for me so much more bearable. Like I said tonight, it's not necessary, but I'm gonna turn it on anyway, just cause it's great to have. And uh, now we've gotten used to sleeping in the cold. Blue sleeps better that way. I sleep better that way. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna crank it up and use it again. It's pretty been pretty awesome. Being able to have something like that in a rooftop tent is awesome. There's basically no hassle factor. You just charge the battery 
and put it up in your tent and duct out the two ducts through one of your zippers and you have an air conditioner. That Zero Breeze has made this trip doable. It would not have been as doable without that at all. I would have been miserable. Of course, now that I'm leaving, there's thunderstorms rolling in, it'll probably cool off. I'm very interested in how well it'll cool the camper uh, because that will kind of give you an idea of how well it might cool like a um, go fast camper or something like that because it's a very similar setup. It's a space with a pop top and so similar insulation values, I'm sure. So this is the setup I've had going here. So I'm loading the Zero Breeze in to where the vents face backward because my glass opens here. So then I can clip this on and if I have to go inside of a store and blues in the car, I can clip these on, pop the glass, and then just turn it on and not worry about anything. Those fit pretty good up on my cargo net. So on my battery here, I just pull this cable off and then this is the 12 volt cable that I bought. This is the 12 volt, 24 volt converter cable. So I put an Anderson plug right here and this will feed the battery all day. If the battery hasn't charged enough when I get to a store, I can unplug it from here, plug it into there, turn it on and it'll just run off of my battery system, no problem. So it's a pretty useful cable and I recommend, especially for this kind of use that you get one and then I'm kind of strapping it down using Blue's blanket and a rock strap. That way it's getting scratched up less because I am scratching this thing up quite a bit. But that system seems to be working pretty well. So I have returned from my trip to the Midwest where I knew it was going to be hot, but I did not anticipate it to be that hot. So I got a proper test of the Zero Breeze in a tent scenario, in a traveling scenario. I was traveling for 11 days I think you can probably see here, it's got some uh, it's got some battle scars. This thing's been in the rooftop tent a bunch. It's been keeping the cab cool while I run into grocery stores, and it's been awesome. To wrap this review up, I kind of want to go through on some of the comments that I've seen online. I've seen a lot of negative feedback on these, and it seems to be from people who are expecting too much out of it. For instance, putting it in their Sprinter van, and they're trying to sleep during the day with it. Any vehicle is a metal structure being heated by the sun so you're effectively making a solar oven. So to expect an air conditioner of this size to cool that down during the day is just, that's ridiculous. This is not going to outperform the sun. What this air conditioner is, is this is a 2300 BTU AC. My brother and his family were camping at the lake as well, and they have a pop-up camper. The air conditioner that's mounted on the roof of a pop-up camper, and a lot of the Sprinter vans and stuff have those as well, that's like a 13,000 BTU system. The biggest advantage to me is that you can charge this while you drive and you can charge this off of solar. Of course, rooftop tents don't come with any sort of an AC system, nor do most teardrop and off-road campers. So in my opinion, this is filling that void for upgrading those types of campers to a system that has an air conditioner. This made traveling with a dog so much better because I would point this forward. I'd have the ducks popped out of the window here. The way my back glass works, nobody can steal anything. If I pop it up a little bit, they can't even open it all the way. And then I can have the ducks coming out and this will cool the vehicle off while I'm away. When I would go into the grocery store for 10, 15 minutes, come back out, the temperature was consistent with, it was noticeably cooler inside the truck than it was outside. Blue didn't even notice what was going on. She was sleeping the whole time. She, she wasn't panting at all. The dog was cooled down. I didn't have anything to worry about. This was less of a hassle to set up than my diesel heater was when I had that running into the tent because I don't have to deal with any fuels or anything. I just plug it in when I'm driving. When I get to camp and I'm going to sleep, turn it on and it cools everything down. The biggest thing in my opinion is you are getting an AC that can run off of a battery. You can run this off of solar. This is gonna be great for certain trips going to Utah, stuff like that. Of course, in the high elevations of Colorado, I probably won't take it along but this is opening up a lot of windows into areas that I usually don't go in the summer just because it's miserable. I am very fond of the Zero Breeze now that I've gotten a chance to use it and I did not take it easy on this thing. I've been running it a ton all day long when I installed the Red Vision system in the Conqueror. I was running this thing all day long. I mean, I've not been easy on it. This system is working very well for me. If you look at the cost of these, they are expensive, but if you compare the cost to a generator plus a roof mounted AC, it's, it's kind of getting into the same thing. It just depends on your needs. In my opinion, for 
the overland type setup where we're kind of modular with the way we do things, I think this is a perfect setup. As long as you understand what this is, this is not gonna cool your house off. This is not gonna cool your apartment off. This is for small spaces, for spot cooling, and for sleeping. If you know what to expect out of this thing, it is amazing. This is a very cool unit, very cool technology. Okay guys, that's the Zero Breeze air conditioner. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. And until next time, see ya. I've included links below to check out the Zero Breeze air conditioner system and the full Midwestern trip video will be coming soon. Like and subscribe so you can check that out.